Thanks for joining us. And today we're going to talk about exploring the science behind meditation techniques. So the earliest recorded written record of the term of meditation, which in Sanskrit is dhyan, is from the Upanishads from the era of 800 to 500 BCE. And meditation has also played a key role in the development of Buddhism, Jainism, Hinduism, etc. And as well, some forms of meditation have been practiced in Judaism, Christianity, and other religions. And when we look at Western European culture, we can see that meditation has been around in the culture since about the 19th century. A lot of ideas that were diffused through India came into general awareness. And as well, the real popularity of meditation in North America began around the time of the 1960s when folks like Maharishi Yogi of Transcendental Meditation and other spiritual teachers started to teach more Western students. And a lot of these Eastern esoteric practices and outlooks were adopted in the 1960s and 70s with the counter culture that arose during that time. And in this video, we will look at meditation from a scientific perspective to try to understand some of the benefits and the practices. Now, in looking at the body-mind system in trying to understand how meditation works, we can take a look at how the brain works. And in particular, we can take a look at the limbic system. And so the limbic system is a key aspect of the mammalian brain, which allows us to have emotional expression and to engage in social relations. And when we look at the right side of the brain, in particular the right hippocampus, this allows us to have spatial awareness. And early in life, we start to form cognitions of our experience. And within the right brain, we also have the right amygdala, which is really the brain's fear center. And this is really an alarm bell that prevents us from getting into harm, to alert us to danger. And so we develop this ability very early on to avoid danger, which has really helped in our evolution. And as we develop as children, and particularly when we start to learn language, we start to develop the left side of the limbic system and start to engage in symbolic forms of communication, language, etc. And certainly as our species evolved, it was very adaptive to have a responsive right amygdala so that one could be aware of danger in a natural environment. However, in this modern age, when we're not exposed to the same level of danger as our ancestors, our right amygdala has become an essential part of our stress response. And even when we're not in immediate danger, but are in a stress response, the right amygdala can end up signaling a whole chain of hormones that run throughout the body. Epinephrine, which is produced in the adrenals, and the development of cortisol creates a stress situation in the body. And as a result of that, there's all these physiological effects. Now, we know that long-term stress, long-term chronic stress, is very damaging to us. It really wears us down. It fatigues us. And it doesn't allow us to have a resilient body and mind. So one of the benefits of meditation is that it can start to interrupt that stress response. And we see in the scientific literature that there's ample evidence for how meditation impacts the stress response. So in 2015, Brewer et al. did a study where they concluded that meditation affects the default mode network. And the default mode network is what processes self-referential thought, and this is linked to rumination and worry. In 2010, Sarah Lazar and her colleagues at Harvard found that meditation actually increases the cortical thickness of the hippocampus and as well decreases the size of the right amygdala of the brain's fear center. In a 2015 study by Letters et al. of long-term meditators, people who had been meditating for 20 years or more, they found that meditation actually protects against the reduction of tissue in the brain. So as one ages, the brain shrinks. They found with long-term meditators that there was a marked reduction in the decrease of the volume of the brain. And so all of this goes to show that meditation can help to nullify the effects of stress and these changes in the brain, such as increasing cortical thickness, reducing the size of the right amygdala, and helping to prevent the decline of the aging brain, all result in greater health and well-being. So what are the physiological effects of meditation? So we know that meditation can have an effect on the breathing patterns, on the heart rate, and also on the blood pressure. And a lot of meditation paths will have this effect by just calming the body down by sitting in a very calm state, by engaging the attention inwardly. And certainly if one sits down in a quiet place and brings one's attention inwards, one will start to experience a quiet body and quiet mind. But what if one could do this in five minutes or less? This is where Kriya Yoga comes into play. 
Kriya Yoga is a very advanced form of meditation that uses a particular type of intentional breathing, which we call Kriya Pranayam, which very rapidly gets one into an internalized state. And it can bring one into meditation in five minutes or less. And it does this very directly by leveraging the body's parasympathetic nervous system. So we have two aspects of our central nervous system. We have the sympathetic nervous system, which is involved in activity, and the parasympathetic nervous system, which brings us into a low idle state. And so what happens in Kriya Yoga with this slow intentional breathing is that one ends up putting pressure on the dorsal vagal complex, which is this aspect of the parasympathetic nervous system that is connected with the medulla oblongata in the brain, which is responsible for the heart rate, the autonomic functions of heart rate. So by engaging this slow intentional breathing, it actually affects the medulla to slow down the heart rate. So you're slowing down the breath with intentional breathing, you're slowing down the heart rate indirectly by stimulating the parasympathetic. And what happens is one starts to be drawn in very naturally into an internalized state. The body starts to disappear from one's awareness and the mind becomes calm and clear. Usually what happens is people start to go into a state of peace. And so this is often such a great relief for many people who have a very active life that involves a lot of stress when they can use Kriya Yoga and just do it for five minutes and start to retreat within, it starts to level set everything. All of the thoughts and feelings related to worry and stress and so on start to level out. The practitioner starts to let go of that and it starts to clear within. And so when the mind is clear and the body is clear and calm, one gets into a very great state of well-being. And one may have a blissful inner experience, which starts to awaken one's latent spirituality, one's latent connection to one's authentic inner self. And so while meditation can be an effective strategy to mitigate stress response, to help to nullify the effects of aging, Meditation is really the doorway into that inner sanctum where one may start to experience one's true nature. So if you have any questions about this video, feel free to send me an email at info at modernkriya.com. Also check our website at modernkriya.com and our YouTube channel. So thanks for joining us and we will see you next time.